I just got done reading and watching the Jaya arc in One Piece, and I gotta say, I'm I'm really enjoying this beginning of the Skypea saga. I've heard from fans of the One Piece about how much fun it will be. I'm not sure. I am, of course, still going into this series blind, uh, not knowing too much. Uh, I, I, you know, I know a few things that you really can't avoid, avoid on the internet pictures and whatnot, but I really don't know the, the fine details. I, I don't really know how, what really to expect going forward, especially now that there's this Sky Island, Skypea that exists. I, when I heard about it, when they first started talking about it, I was like, an a land, island in the sky. Almost sounds absolutely ridiculous, but then I was like, oh yeah, this is One Piece. Uh, for you take that rule book about what you can or cannot do fictionally and throw it out the window because there's already been fish people, there's already been uh giants, and of course, there have been uh multiple devil fruit abilities that seem almost impossible, but for some reason, those seem plausible to me. But in a sky island. It's not where I'm going to draw the line, but man, it tells me to expect the unexpected. Because this arc kicks off, we we just get uh, Nico Robin onto the crew, who I absolutely love. And I think I mentioned this in my, uh, in my Alabasta Saga review, but her ability, uh, summoning body parts onto people, hands and shit, breaking necks, breaking backs... She's an ultimate assassin. Uh, I love her personality that I've seen so far. Very, uh, doesn't talk unless uh, spoken to. And also only makes, uh, only speaks when she's got something important to say. While as a lot of the characters of the Straw Hats, who I all love, but that a lot of them yell nonsense sometimes, which is usually hilarious. But a lot of them are yelling nonsense uh, most of the time. But Nico Robin is usually always... You want to pay attention when she speaks because she's usually saying something very important for either right now or down the line. And I really enjoy that. So it kicks off. We got Nico Robin on the crew. Luffy's fine with that. Cool. The crew wasn't too pumped on that, uh, but they, she won him over. She gave Nami some money. Sanji likes all women. Uh, and she made Usopp, Chopper, and Luffy laugh with her, her devil fruit ability. So they all were like, you're good with us, woman. Even though she almost killed Igram. I think if she had killed Igram in the Alabasta Saga, this might be a different conversation. But some, somehow he survived, so it's all good. Um, one thing I'm really hoping for going forward in One Piece is a, a major death. Uh, I feel like we're far enough into the series that we can have something very, like a, a real death go down. Because I, what I've noticed so far is a lot of teasing of death happening, like Igaram, uh, and it not really going down. I almost feel like a lot of the characters I think might have been killed, like Miss Monday, um... Or, uh, God, I can't, Mr. Nine, I think his name was. I think they could still be alive somewhere. We don't know, but it feels like they never commit to deaths yet. There's so much more One Piece to go through, so I'm not too worried. But it feels like they're afraid to commit to deaths. And I feel like you doesn't even need to be a, doesn't need to be a straw hat. To be, to be honest, it just needs, they need a death in a story. Build up a character and then kill him off. I just, I need some of that depth. But make it matter. Don't just do it, to, just don't do it just to do it. Uh, like Naruto did with Neji. Do it uh, in a way that it affects the characters so they move forward and, and become better people. Like our main characters, our main cast. Give us a character death that will push them all to become stronger uh, physically and emotionally. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool. But the ship falls from the sky uh, almost immediately into this arc. Uh, it's an old, they 
with uh, Nico Robin, they figure out it's like a 200-year-old ship. They find a map that says Skypea on it, and Luffy gets super pumped, along with Chopper, and I think Usopp, too. They all get super pumped on the idea of a Sky Island existing. Nami's, uh, well, the crew's uh, log pose is pointing up. So all the signs are pointing to Skypea existing. Nico Robin, I believe, even tells them of a legend of a Sky Island, which I assume in pirate lore there must be some type of Sky Island gimmick. I don't know. But before they move on, uh, they end up trying to find the... They go into the ship wreckage underneath the water. Luffy somehow builds like some scuba gear with some barrels. Honestly, doesn't look like it would work to keep him from touching the seawater and not being all paralyzed and whatnot, but he does it. They build custom scuba gear, scuba gear with barrels. Him, Sanji, and Zoro go underwater, but meanwhile, a, a salvage guy shows up, this monkey fella, which threw me off because I was like, is this guy a devil fruit user? Monkey, like a monkey monkey fruit or some shit? But no, because he ends up swimming uh, later, pretty quickly, because they end up trying to salvage the ship, um, and he ends up going down underwater and ha hanging. He's not a really a bad guy. Uh, I think Nami charms him a little bit to keep them on his the good side, because he does look like a beastly fella. But he doesn't seem like much of a threat. Uh, they go underwater. A big sea monster comes out of nowhere and eats the ship that they're looking through, which was nuts. And this sea monster was at like 20 times the size of the merry-go. Um, but that didn't mean anything because Luffy, Sanji, Zoro, and the monkey fella all get out of this, this creature only to reveal these giant freaking a angel looking things with uh, spears uh they have they're like giants with wings uh but just their shadows and they were 20 times bigger than the 20 times bigger uh sea monster that almost ate Luffy Sanji and Zoro they dip out of there quickly, and it was really funny when they punched uh, the monkey guy off their ship who was still on their ship. That was funny. But one thing I really liked is uh, when the ship got, when they got munched down and Luffy ended up in the ocean, there was a scene of Zoro and, Lu and, uh, Zoro and Sanji pulling Luffy out of the water. Like, they are the perfect right hand and left hand man for for Luffy and I absolutely adore this trio and as long as these three are there this show is going to be absolutely fantastic um top to bottom as long these three are the best of the best they decide to go to Jaya that's why it's the Jaya arc and they want to get some information on this Sky Pia uh I think that Nico Robin while all the crazy shit was going down with the monkey man and the giants uh stole a log pose from the monkey man's crew that was a Jaya uh log pose but it was like an eternal pose that only points to Jaya uh, so they were like, well, it's close by, so maybe they'll have some information, which makes sense. And they only have a finite amount of time to get this information be before their log post starts pointing at another island. And Luffy really wants to go to the Sky Island because he likes adventures, and that's understandable. So they head over to Jaya. Zoro and Luffy hop right off the ship and head right in. Uh, they realize this pi this area is basically run by pirates. It's like the Caribbean. It's like a place where pirates are welcome and they are allowed to exist, and they don't really mess with the people that run like the bars or the hotels or anything because they know that if they mess with them, then there won't be anything to do here. So we'll just. They're off limits. The people that work here are off limits. They'll mess with them, but they're not going to hurt them. And I don't think they'll rob them, at least the people that work in town. That's that's what I got from it. They run into a bunch of 
weirdos. One dude's a sniper who was shooting seagulls earlier before they arrived from a very far distance. He's got almost got like a sniper monocle. They run in, they meet, I don't think they meet him, but there's a luchador running around who was awesome because I believe he had Nappa from Dragon Ball's voice actor. Nostalgia for sure on my part. And he was going around challenging people to fights. And then a very sickly man on a horse uh, who offered Luffy an apple, who, who he eats it almost instantly. And Zoro's like, what are you doing? You don't know what this is. You just met this weirdo. And Luffy, being as naive as he is, is like, well, it's free food, basically. And I, I adore that because Luffy's so young and uh, he's still learning. And we're kind of learning with Luffy how to be a, an adult, you know, a, an adult, but more of like a pirate captain to make the right decisions uh, and whatnot. But they find out that some of these apples are literally killing people in the building that this guy came out of because they chose the wrong apples. And he even says something about Luffy being very lucky that he chose the right apple because um, if you didn't, you would explode, I believe. Uh, they end up trying to go to a hotel uh, and they can't because there's this dude named Bellamy who's running, basically running the town, from what I can tell. He's the top diggity dog here in Jaya. And they're not allowed to go to this hotel. So they head over to a bar where they run into another face that's familiar to me because I played Jump Force, uh, the video game. So this guy is Blackbeard, and I, he must be a major player in this series because he's in Jump Force, and... There's a lot of villains in One Piece. So I assume this guy is going to be important. But him and Luffy don't get along at all. They argue about different tastes. Like they have like a cherry pie that Blackbeard absolutely adored. And Luffy was like, that's gross. And then there was like an alcoholic drink or something that Luffy absolutely loved. And Blackbeard was like, that's disgusting. Uh, Blackbeard ends up bouncing before Luffy and him like get in a little scuffle or at least a verbal fight. But then, almost instantly after that, uh, the top diggity dog uh, Bellamy shows up, who I, I adore this dude's design. I, I think he's really cool uh, off the bat. Uh, I love that he's got Raditz's voice actor from Dragon Ball. Another cool uh, little uh, gem for nostalgia for me. And just to see this dude come in and he starts... He buys Luffy a drink, but only to smash his face into it and into the counter. Oh, by the way, before Nami, uh, Luffy, and Zoro entered this town, Nami made them promise not to get into any fights. And Luffy doesn't break his promises. That's for sure. So this dude is punking Luffy right in front of Zoro, who pulls his sword out, and he's like, what do you want, mother effer? And um, this uh, Jaya, uh, or uh, Bellamy's like, maybe you should take your boy out of here. I think they find out that Luffy, they get like Luffy's old bounty of like 30 million berries, and they think that he's, he's not worth, one, they don't think he's worth that much, and two, Bellamy, I believe, was at like 55 million berries and i really love the concept that some people look down like they they look at these uh these uh bounties as like how strong they are like what their power level is but it's way better than the dragon ball system of power levels because it doesn't really necessarily tell you how strong they are physically they could just be very popular you know like very good at being a pirate like they could be very sneaky or they could be uh, just more noticeable. There could be a pirate out there that's so good at uh, hiding from the law that his bounty could be very small or not at existence, but he could still be very powerful. So the bounties do kind of tell you where these people are at uh, if they have a bounty, but it also doesn't tell you necessarily that you could beat them just because you're 20 million more berries above. Or, or anything like that. I mean, if it was a wide margin, you could say so. But you don't know for sure. But bounties is such a cool concept. And I love it. And I I get it. Because I used to see pictures of bounties on Facebook before I started watching. Like, One Piece pictures. 
And I was like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why these are popular. I mean, I get it pirates, bounties and whatnot, but it makes so much sense now, uh, what they're for. And it's such a cool way to instantly say that guy's worth this many berries. So he must be a beast. So Luffy just told, tells Zoro, do not fight. And I'm not going to fight. But not really because Nami told them not to fight. I kind of felt the same vibes I've got when Luffy and um, Shanks were hanging out when he was a kid. And there was this thug that came in and was punking Shanks. And Shanks didn't do anything. So I think Luffy was just kind of like, you ain't worth my time. And I don't want to mess up this dude's bar any more than, than it needs to be already messed up. And in a way, he's like being a pacifist. But I feel like Luffy should have passed his fist through Bellamy's face because he was being super fucked up. Uh, punched, you know, L L Zoro and Luffy looked beaten down, but they refused to throw a punch. And then they got thrown out of the bar with Nami, who was just just like me saying, you should go back in there and kick these punks asses. I've seen you fight worse. I mean, I think at best, Bellamy is probably as strong as Arlong. Uh, that's my personal guess. But I really like Bellamy. Don't get me wrong. I feel like if somehow down the line this fella joined the Straw Hats, if he got redemption, I think this guy could be really cool as a part of the crew. Just like I thought with Arlong. Um, they bounce. They, they run into Blackbeard again. And Blackbeard and Luffy agree on one thing. That dreams and adventure as a pirate are very important to be a pirate. Uh, and Bellamy being a total dickbag talking about how dreams and uh, whatnot are fooey. And if you want to be one of the part of the new pirate era, you don't need to worry about pirate lore and dreams. You need to just worry about one thing. What's physically in front of you, basically saying, like, don't think about these bull. He said, like, the one piece isn't real, which probably really got under Luffy's skin. But he believes wholeheartedly in these things and why would it be not fit, real after all these people looking for it I, I guess and also Skypea isn't real according to Bellamy but I think I think it is um the crew head up back to the ship thank god they have chopper to check on their wounds I'm glad we got a doctor now because uh back in the last saga there were so many injuries that it's like if they don't have a doctor on site they should be dead or crippled permanently. At least the people that aren't Luffy and Zoro. I mean, I still don't know how Usopp survived that bat from Mr. Four to the freaking dome. It, it boggles my mind. I feel like he should have been in like a coma uh, for a, like a whole arc. Like until they get the Sky P and he wakes up on the, in the sky. That'd be great. Um, they basically have no information, but Nico Robin, who bounced off the ship into town as well, while everybody else hung back, uh, says, Hey, um, I talked to some peeps in, in town and there's this, uh, there's this weirdo dude. I think his name was Crockett or Cricket in the other side of this Island, uh, out of sight of mock town where they were. And we can go talk to him on the other side of Jaya. They, before they even get over there, they run into another monkey man who looks way different, a little older than the last one we saw. This guy uh, has like a sound attack with his voice in a uh, microphone. So they have microphones in One Piece. Um, tries to blow them away. They just kind of ignore him, if I'm correct. They head over to the other side of the island. They um, deal with uh, meeting this cricket fella who wasn't there. There's like a half of a house uh, on this island, but with like a fake house on the other side. It was it was really interesting. Um, eventually, the cricket fella and the monkey guys show up. There's a little bit of a misunderstanding. There's a really cool part where like Sanji tries to fight him, but I think he like keels over uh, the cricket fella because uh, he's got the bends from diving too deep too often or something. Uh, I've heard of the bends, uh, something about not coming up in time from going up, or go not depressurizing as you're coming up from going deep down, deep diving. But it looked like he was deep, deep, I could be wrong, 
but it looked like he was deep sea diving without equipment. I, I, I could have just missed his equipment, but that seems insane. I don't think he can get that deep underwater, N not even by anime standards. They meet this guy who turns out to be, uh, he tells them the lore about a guy uh, who, uh, some Nolan the Liar, who used to be around like years and years and years ago, that was his ancestor, who spoke of Skypea and spoke of like El Dorado or something and whatnot. And he was basically executed for lying, even though, I mean, they didn't say, they couldn't prove that he wasn't lying. But it was just so unbelievable that there's an island in the sky. And Cricket, or Crockett, he's here to try and clear his family name. And not really for recognition, but just for his own personal spiritual journey. I don't think he gives two shits what other people think. Uh, especially since he's been there so long, deep diving, looking for jewels and shit. He does have some cool shit that does not look like it's from... Uh, regular regular people. He had like this gold and whatnot. So that's interesting. Uh, he tells them they have like a little party because they realize they're all like dreamers and they they want to go to the Sky Island. He tells them that he will fix up their ship along with his monkey fellas who are those monkey dudes from earlier are part of his little group. They're all adventurers looking for Sky Island. Which makes it weird, because they all want to find, like, you know, crazy... They want to find the Sky Island, but Luffy and them want to go, too. you think they'd want to go with them, or at least one of them go with them up to Sky Island. Skypea, because it, you'd think that uh, they'd want to see it. It's like, you've been doing this all these years, and now they want to go, and you're just going to hang back and kind of kind of like... You're hoping they don't die, but at the same time, you're like, they might. He sends them into the forest in the middle of the night to get this bird that's points south. It was definitely a gag because it's supposed to get them to the... There's like a vortex that shoots out of the ocean uh, a few times a month or some shit. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it shoots this jet stream out of the ocean, and he believes that if they fix up their ship, if they get this bird, they can sail upwards, uh, which sounds ridiculous, if they go up this stream, this jet stream thing. And I was like, okay, let's do this. But what confuses me after this, he sends the entire crew into the forest in the middle of the night to find this stupid bird. And they have this really funny adventure where they all split up into different groups. I just feel... They didn't need to send the whole crew because of what happens next. Freaking Bellamy, uh, king uh, asshole of this arc, the main antagonist of this arc, shows up with his whole crew because uh, he hears about this, uh, this, this guy who believes in Nolan the Liar. And he goes there and he, they beat the crap out of him and his monkey fellas. And I assume the monkey crew... Um, they beat the crap out of them. Uh, find, I find out that this Bellamy dude also has... Uh, I was going to say Quirk because I've been watching uh, a lot of My Hero Academia. But he also has a devil fruit ability. The spring spring fruit or the boing boing fruit. But his legs turn into these springs. And he does this crazy spring punch into the dude's gut. Or, I, I don't know, it's insane. I think he called it Spring Snipe or something. But he was nuts. And he seems very powerful after that. I almost want there not to... Like, for a while, I, I, it's cool that he's got a devil fruit because it kind of works for him. But I, I hope that we get villains that don't have devil fruit abilities. That are just skilled. Like, like super skilled at something. Like Zoro. Because we, I don't think we need to... Because originally, it felt like we would rarely see Devil Fruit abilities until... It, I thought, you know, maybe occasionally we'd see one, uh, a saga, another one. But now it seems like everybody on the Grand Line... If you're somebody on the Grand Line, you probably have a Devil Fruit ability. But there's people like Zoro and Sanji who are just talented... Uh, mother effers and i want to see a villain like that someone who doesn't want to have a devil fruit ability but 
Uh, I digress. Um, they have an adventure in the forest of death, uh, fighting bugs and whatnot, which was super interesting to learn that Usopp is not afraid of spiders. I sure am. But Sanji and Nami are deathly afraid of these giant tarantulas. Uh, we find out Zoro still doesn't trust Nico Robin, which is 100% understandable, cause, but it was really funny because he's like, I don't trust you. And he starts walking away, and Nico Robin's like, we just came from that direction. And I was like, oh boy. Kind of like trying to have a cool moment, and she kind of ruins it for him. They head back. They find out what uh, Bellamy did. Luffy's like, well, I'm going to go get your shit back, and I'm also going to kick these people's asses if they don't give it to me. Um, Cricket uh, is like, no, dude, this is my battle. Don't worry about me and my shit. I'll handle it. Uh, but Zoro stops him and tries to give him his sword. He's like, if you want to stop Luffy, you're going to need this sword. Because that's the only way you're going to stop him, is what I got from that. And I thought that was so badass. Uh, cause Zoro was not trying to stop him cause Zoro, and Zoro even asks Luffy if he wants him to come help him out. And Luffy's like, nah, I got this. Zoro doesn't even question it, but I want to know if like Zoro knew how strong Bellamy was just by, he, he kind of knew by meeting him. And I wonder if it was like a crew that he knew that Luffy couldn't handle by himself, if he would insist on going or go anyway without Luffy's uh, approval. But he didn't even question it. He was like, um, kind of like, okay, I just wanted to fight, but okay. But I wouldn't be, he like, he's like, I'll go with you and watch and back you up. Because you're my bro and you're my captain. And I love that about Zoro. Uh, I'm trying to remember what Sanji did this whole time. Sanji kind of just hung back from uh, oogling uh, Nico Robin and, and Nami and whatnot. Um, I think he might have helped cook dinner. He watched the ship while Zoro and Luffy did some stuff. I hope Sanji gets a major fight coming up. He did have one with Mr. Two, but he needs more stuff to do. Because he's still one of my faves. Luffy heads back to, uh, to Mock Town. But before he gets there, the whole town finds out that Luffy's actually worth 100 million berries, which is more than almost twice as much as Bellamy. None of them believe that after what happened earlier. Of course, why would you? They didn't do anything physically, which has worked great for this scene. Bellamy's like, what do you want, you little punk biatch, to Luffy? And Luffy's just like, you're going to give me back the gold right now. And Bellamy starts using his spring attack around the whole town, smashing buildings, smashing uh, everything in his his wake. He uses the boing boing bouncing everywhere. It was a really cool shot. He tells Luffy like he can't even throw a punch, and Luffy's like, "You want me to throw a punch, dude?" And as boing boing boy. Bellamy is about to come in with his finishing move. Luffy throws the most epic one punch man punch that I've seen him throw onto, and it was such a moment. He beat Bellamy with one punch, leaving fist print in his face. A, fi a fist print in his face, like divots. Uh, the rest of his crew pretty much crumbles after that. Um, and give them back, gives them back the gold. He heads back. It was nuts. Uh, I I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was such a cool thing. They didn't make a big fight about it. They didn't need to. It was not necessary. I love that they didn't go like three episodes into this crazy fight. It's like this isn't even my final form. I can turn into an even bigger spring. No, no, he took care of business. And before Luffy heads back, we get like a little cutscene of Meanwhile and Buggy the Clown is dealing with um, just trying to find the Straw Hats and they run into Ace and Ace basically hangs out with them, which was funny, and wants to party and drink their alcohol. And Buggy's crew's like, let's take this guy out because he keeps falling asleep. Um, and, uh, Buggy's like, no, he's a white beard pirate. 
I know Whitebeard. So apparently this Whitebeard fella is pretty badass. And I've met him way back in my old adventures on here. So Buggy, one of my absolute favorite characters, has had some crazy adventures uh, on the Grand Line in the past, years ago. So I'd love to know more about that. Because I really like Buggy, and I hope they do more with him. Uh, I know he's kind of like the Team Rocket villain, him and Alveda running around just causing problems. Uh, they they just party with Ace, which is great. We also meet these old white men that run the the, the Marines that basically keep the status quo. They're arguing about who should take Crocodile's spot. I didn't even think about this because Crocodile is one of the seven warlords. Who is going to take his spot? I didn't know that people took spots. I thought now there was just six warlords. Um, speaking of sea warlords, uh, a dude named Doflamingo who looks very intimidating. Uh, another big fella. I can't remember his name. Uh, with a big Bible looking thing. They come in and I guess they're warlords. Uh, this Doflamingo guy can control people like a puppet. Kind of like Konkuro from Naruto. Very interesting. Didn't get much about them. They seem kind of cocky. We have... Uh, Mother, mother freaking, uh, uh, what's his damn name? Uh, Hawkeye Miha show up. Hawkeye Miha says, I wasn't even going to come, but now I'm here. Basically shows up to find out who the new warlord is. But before that can happen, another fella shows up. I think his name was Lafayette, um, or Lafitte. He shows up, looks like a clock orange or clockwork orange type of character and says, Hey, don't hold your horses. My boss, my captain, Blackbeard, is going to make a big name for himself real soon. And he definitely should be the, sev the new seventh warlord. And they, I think they get intrigued by this. And they say, okay, we don't really know this Blackbeard fella. But we'll give you some time to make a name for yourself, and we'll go from there. And then I think we run into Whitebeard, who gets a note from Shanks saying they need to, to talk about Ace or something. Some shit, I think, that has to do with Ace, who's part of the Whitebeard Pirates. Uh, he refuses to answer the note or something and Shanks gets the call so Shanks shows up on screen on a page and is basically going to head up and meet up with Whitebeard so these two powerhouses are about to combine forces for a while and I'm super excited to see what they do with Shanks going forward I mean I feel like we're at the point where this guy can come back into the story or find Luffy maybe he seems very important we get back to the story. The crew is ready to go. Luffy shows up in the nick of time. They head out to the the stream, the jet stream, the jet thing to head up to Sky Island. Um, and on their way, they find out they're being tailed by this Blackbeard, by the Blackbeard crew who are on a very unique looking raft ship that has cannons it looks like it's customized but it looks cheap as all hell but it's also really cool looking and it fits these guys these weirdos they don't catch up with them in time luffy and the crew go up the jet stream now with a customized merry go uh, which doesn't look like it would work in any shape or form but i love that it was like a uh, a chicken instead of like something that actually flies Thanks to Nami's navigation skills, uh, I mean, Usopp's in the background just screaming his head off because he's an absolute coward. Um, but that's fine. That's his character. That's his gimmick. I'm not going to knock a guy. But I think that, you know, at this point, he's been through worse than falling from the sky. Um, I mean, everybody else except for him and Nami seem pretty confident in this. Especially Luffy. He's just like, nah, this is great, dog. Let's let's keep going. I'm not worried at all. They make it up this damn jet stream. And uh, I stopped right on the part when they got to Sky Island. They saw the clouds. They made it. Um, I'm currently right there. 
Uh, they made it to Sky Island, and that's insane. So the thing went down. They made it to this mythical place. This place exists. So, like I said earlier, uh, anything is possible in One Piece now. And that is something I need to get used to, because sometimes a lot of anime will set a rule set rules maybe they are setting rules but this this damn adventure is so vast and so big that the rules are haven't been even laid down yet so i feel like at any point i can expect the un i have to expect the unexpected now that we're dealing with islands in the sky um and monkey people who just look like monkeys i guess and i, I don't think they really touched in on that but uh i really enjoyed this i really like bellamy um i think my only problem is i think sanji gets pushed off to the side a lot uh and i really like him and his design and his character and his fighting style he wasn't really necessary i guess for this but um he did help with the the going underwater Nico Robin showing off her skills. I loved that. She she was very useful. Anytime they had to go get like information from Jaya or whatnot, she was able to do it. She was able to decipher some of the things off the ship that, that fell from the sky. She's super useful on this crew and is a complete uh, different type of character. And I, and I really enjoy that. Zoro, always the best right-hand man. And I, I would have loved to see Zoro whoop Bellamy's ass just as much as I loved Luffy doing it. Because you know, I still don't know who's stronger, Luffy or Zoro. And I hope they keep this a, a very ambiguous. I, I love that they find out, Zoro finds out he's got a bounty. And, Zo and Sanji's like, what the fudge? I should have a bounty. Uh, and I love that they all want these bounties. Because they're like, hey, that's not fair. I want a bounty. Uh, I, I think that's super cool. Uh, they're on this adventure, and so am I. Uh, what do you think of Jaya? If you could please comment, let me know what you thought of my, um, uh, review here. Got any questions, I'll answer them. Like this video, share this video, push the Morfetto brand, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Uh, I'm loving One Piece so much, and I am so excited to see what comes next, because it just gets crazier and crazier but still absolutely amazing i'm mr morfetto and i will talk to you guys later